Day two of the EPT Monte Carlo main event started with 332 players taking their seats. Good luck, guys. Huh? Enjoy. A bunch of seasoned pros were sent to the rail. I thought it was not man. GG. While PSPC champ Ramon Kalidas and PSPC runner-up Julian Martini worked their way to the top of the leaderboard. Now, with the bubble approaching, everyone's attention turns to the money. Some players will thrive. Others simply look to survive. And a whole host will leave with nothing. Barcelona. Jason Mercier, he went with his instincts, he made the call. Yeah. There's the professional level, and there's the Ivy League. Come Sebastian Pauli coming to terms with what he has just achieved. Nicky Corrin has done it! Two main event titles! Sebastian Mallets has gone from poker fanboy to poker champion. This is why people love the EDT. Hello again from Monaco. It's the PokerStars European Poker Tour presented by Monte Carlo Casino. Day two of the main event continues with the action about to resume. Welcome back inside the Salle des Etoiles. I'm James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. The Salle des Etoiles. Translation, the room of the Etoile. Stars, Joe. It means stars. And we need some new stars on the feature table. We need a European Poker Tour OG. How about the player in the main event with the shortest commute? Monaco resident, Patrick Antonius. But wait, there's more. I'm gonna throw in EPT champion Davni Katai at no additional cost. I'll take it. And as you brought up the subject of money, I should highlight the bubble is looming. Finnish superstar Patrick Antonius burst onto the tour back in 2005 making the final table in Barcelona, and then winning Baden for 288K. We have a winner of the Austrian leg of the EPT. Davidi Katai took down EPT Berlin 10 years ago, completing poker's coveted triple crown. Davidi Katai is a European Poker Tour champion. Both players will be hoping to add to their stellar resumes with another cash here. Well, this 5K main event had a huge field, 1,073 entries, and here are the biggest stacks with 186 players remaining. First and second in the PSPC, Ramon Kalilas and Julian Martini are one and two on the leaderboard, both amassing huge stacks in the first half of the day. Super high roller third place finisher Mikiti Bolzikovsky has 320K, as does French player Eric Svez, and Sofia Lovgren rounds out the top 10. Ramon Kalilas, anyone who thought he'd be a one-hit wonder is dumb. He got $5.1 million for winning the PSPC. Julian Martini got nearly $3 million as the runner-up. And Sophia Lovgren has more than half a million dollars in live earnings. She was at our feature table earlier. Here is our new feature table lineup. Antonius and Katai, both on the shorter side. Christoph Vogelsang has a very healthy 175K. It's the UK's Jonathan Darling, who is table chip leader. Did you say Christoph Vogel saying? Man, I can't wait for those shot clocks. Action underway. Blinds 1,500, 3,000 with a 3K big blind ante. Davidi Katai first to act. Folds under the gun. Patrick Antonius with King Queen. Some folks trying to get to the money might fold this hand from early position with 13 big blinds, but not Patrick Antonius. All in for 39 and a half K. Pocket sevens for Yaman Nakdali, a former professional MMA fighter. And he is also all in. Gonna have to get pretty lucky for no one to wake up with a better hand with five people still to act behind. Fold it around to the blinds. Uh, can I have a count of both decks? Uh-oh! Vogelsang with ace-queen in the small. Christoph Vogeltank. This actually is a decision, by the way. Yeah. He folds. Wow. And the big blind's out. Showdown with Antonius at risk. 
what you had? Good hand. <laughs> okay. I had a queen. Ace queen? Maybe. Ah, there's some kinks left. Classic race underway at this feature table. Good luck. Thank you. Not quite a pure flip with that queen folded. Well, that is not a good flop for Patrick. He only has five outs. Nagdali's sevens are still good, plus he now has a straight draw. Boom, king on the turn. Wow. Patrick Antonius now just has to fade a five or a seven on the river. Oh, it's the five. What? Good game, Patrick. Good luck, guys. Patrick Antonius is eliminated. For those of you used to watching Patrick on cash game shows, sorry, he cannot buy back in. Well, after winning that race against Patrick Antonius, Yaman Nagdali is now playing a six-figure stack. Yeah, man. Can't wait to tell some knack-knack jokes. Well, we are heading out into the field where Spraggy is in a hand against fellow Team Pro Rafael Moraes. Raf with 1.6 million in live earnings. You pick up the action on the flop. Spraggy has just called a bet of 3,000. Seven of clubs on the turn. And looks like Moraes is betting again 10,000. It's funny because Spraggy does look like a rejected character from Scooby-Doo. Calls again. This hand going to the river, which is the eight of clubs. The only thing I know here is that no one had a flush draw. Check, check. Just the nuts. <laughs> Rivered it. I bought him. Have I ever told you how blockers aren't real? No, sir. Thank you. So Spraggy wins that one with the nut straight. And we've got more out of table action. PSPC runner up Julian Martini has gone to the river in a hand against Hungary's Sharpa Bak. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back it up. It is a straighty, flushy, paired board. All of the things. And Martini shoves it all into call for back, <laughs> who does call <laughs> and has a full house. Oh, Julian somehow not able to rep quad sixes. What a clown. Baby got back. He gets the double up as Julian Martini drops down to 370,000. And sad to report, that Andre Akari has departed before the money. Boo. Well, we're heading back to the main stage where Leo Margetz has taken Patrick Antonis' old seat. She's on the flop in a hand against Kamel Atui. Leo with kings, Kamel with a pair of sixes. Boy, this is a great flop for pocket kings. It's almost as if whatever Leo wants, Leo gets. Well, she was the pre-flop aggressor and she continues here for 10,500. Atui would technically be ahead of Ace-King, but that's about it against Leo's opening range from that position. He calls. Turn card. Is the eight of clubs. Margetz now near enough a nine to one favorite. Yeah, and I don't think there's too much reason for Leo to slow down here. Yes, Etui would have a straight or two pair sometimes, but not enough to not bet. 37 and a half thousand in the middle. And here comes a second barrel. 12,000. This feels like a pretty clear give up spot to me, even if I couldn't see all the hold cards. That is a check raise from Atui, 36,000. No, they say one of the best times to raise is when you have nothing. The thing is, a pair of sixes isn't really nothing. You could fold out better, but you can't really fold out anything better that's gotten this far.
Mar gets calls. And we're going to the river with nearly 110,000 in the middle. They owe the effective stack with 116k behind. River card is the nine of hearts, completes a lot of straight draws. Yeah, a tweet didn't get there, but something did. Okay. Oh, he bluff shoves. It's all into call for Leo Margetts and worth highlighting, Joe, that we are 20 away from the money. There's a few bluffs that missed, but really not that many. And he should not be playing two pair this way, which means it's straights or nothing. And that is a tough spot to be in here with Kings. Looks back at the Kings and folds. Show the bluff. Huh? Show the bluff. Show the bluff. Mm -hmm. Love. You showed the love or no? <laughs> she was thinking about it. <laughs> Leo was so thirsty to see that bluff. That's we up to 278k. Leo takes a hit. Nah. Down to 116k. Good for <laughs> this guy. Yeah, I don't think she believes him. Here at the PokerStars EPT, presented by Monte Carlo Casino, we're just 10 players away from the money in the main event. 169 remain, 159 get paid, with a min cash worth 8,690 euros. How many remain? 160? No. Time to head back to the action. Blinds are 1,500, 3,000, with a 3K big blind ante. And at the feature table, Action is on Christoph Vogelsang, who has pocket nines. He can be slow to act, but luckily we told him it was on him like four minutes ago. Vogelsang has $26.8 million in live earnings. He's open here to 6.5K. Pocket threes for Yaman Nagdali. Nagdali's on the button, but on the bubble, you don't really want to be calling off 10% of your stack here. Well, he has called. Jonathan Darling's called with 8-7 of hearts. Jonas Lauk with ace-king in the big blind. These fellas begging for a squeeze. We're in the big blind to get Lauky. Do you remember that song? I do. And there's the re-race. Can I see your exact? I think 178 before the hand. 178 before the hand? Yeah. 178, OK. Christoph knows what a great squeeze spot this looks like, so he might not be able to give Lauk credit for being this strong. And Nines is kind of a monster these days. Well, Vogelsang has called. Nakdali and Darling both fold. Heads up to the flop. And that flop is pretty decent for a pair of nines. Lauk, by the way, had a deep run in the EPT London main event back in 2014. Four. Finished 12th. All right, so this is where less skilled players won't know what to do in a three-bet pot. One over card, Lauk probably doesn't have a 10, but he could have jacks or queens or kings or aces. Could have ace-king or ace-queen. Well, Vogelsang has reclaimed the betting lead, fires out 16,000. What kind of size is that? Who thinks of that? 16 into 80? Lauk calls. Now he's got Lauk calling with the worst of it. The turn card is a queen, which means Lauk has picked up a gut shot to the nut straight. Ace-queen is totally within the range for Jonas, but it is for Vogelsang too. Well, Lauk has checked for a second time. Vogelsang is still a three to one favorite. Thirty-three thousand. Now Lauk has considerably worse odds to draw. Let's it go. Now I'm neither smart enough nor have enough time to tell you what a masterful play this was from Christoph Vogel saying. Mostly not smart enough, but I'm also out of time. He's up to nearly a quarter of a million. Jonas Lauk down to 127K. Still looks like Dennis Leary, you know, from Demolition Man. Well, there has just been an elimination from one of the outer tables. Krasimir Yankov lost a classic race, taking us down to 167.
And we are staying out in the field. Ramon Kalilas is in a three-way pot. Is in a what? A three-way? No. His opponents, Joseph Sabe and Miguel Caprias. Sabe with one EPT cash over 800K in live earnings. And he bets the river 34,000. Is this for real or is this just Sabe rattling? Okay, that doesn't work. Action on Ramon. He calls. Caprius folds. Sabe tables a pair of nines. Ramon has a straight. Yeah, just kind of balancing his timing tells on the end there. Not a tough decision. Ramon now has close to half a million. But we've got to head back to the main stage because Yaman Nakdali is all in and way behind. He's run ace four into Jonas Lauk's aces. This guy, so Lauky. <laughs> they literally write themselves, people. Not looking good for Nakdali. No space on the turn, please. I'm going. A four, just three to sweat, four. I don't want to sweat. He wants a spade. Shouldn't have said spades. No sweat. The deal. Nagdali drawing dead on the turn and eliminated. Nagdali knocked out by this Laukin guy. And that's going to take us down to 163 players. A reminder, 159 get paid. Well, an update from the outer tables. The bust outs keep coming. We're down to 162 because German player Halil Kocknes has just been knocked out. And there's another all-in and a call. Francis Masu Cohen is all-in for his last 17K against Shingis Satubayev. He's behind. He gets there. Oh, yes, come on, baby. Somehow manages to beat 9-5. Cohen's still short, but crucially, still alive. Still breathing, literally and figuratively. You like this? Yes, I see you. I see you give me two in. I can make respiration. Breath for 10 minutes. Do we need a medic? Well, there's another elimination. Christos Xanthopoulos is out, leaving us at 161. Hand for hand play will start when we're at 160 on the pure bubble. Let's go back to our feature table. Christoph Vogelsang is facing a bet from Jonathan Darling. We're on the flop. Darling with the best hand, ace high. Vogelsang with a straight draw. He's almost fully cocooned. And he raises to 18,000. I mean, this is where the pros are going to really shine. No offense to Jonathan Darling and his 54K in live earnings, but the killers, like Vogelsang, are going to make absurd profits in these situations. Darling has called the raise. The turn card is a nine. Ace height still the best hand, and Darling now better than a three-to-one favorite. Yeah, good for him. Called the flop raise, but I do not envy what's going to happen to him. Now that he has not hit the turn. Action is on Fogelsang. That is a near pot size bet. 50,000. So brutal. This absolutely reeks, but folding is totally the right play here. You just can't do it. Not on the bubble. Yeah, Jonathan Darling forced to fold the best hand. Vogelsang just owns you. It doesn't matter. Fold Ace King, take a walk. He's just too good. Now playing 272K. We have an all-in and a call. Well, as you can hear from tournament director Toby Stone, there is an all-in and a call in the field. One off the bubble, Harpreet Gill is at risk and dominated by Guillaume Diaz. Aces versus tens. Looking very good for aces. Harpreet Gill dead on the turn and with his elimination, we are on the bubble. 
And that means it's time to go hand for hand in the Monte Carlo main event. Just waiting for play to finish at all tables in the room. Hold fire. There is another all in and a call over on the far side of the room. Danny Pike at risk, and he's run jacks into Kings. If Kings hold, hand for hand play not necessary. We'll be in the money. Looking good. Kings do hold. Ariel Saban KOs Danny Pike, and that'll do it. It's over. We're down to 159. We're in the money. That's it. I know, right? None of us expected it to go that quickly. Okay, the problems first, so congratulations everybody. You're all catching the EVT Monte Carlo 2022. World famous almost bubble coverage. Hey. Nice. Why are you looking to start your own poker adventure? You can begin that journey today. Find out how by heading over to PokerStars. Here at the PokerStars EPT presented by Monte Carlo Casino, the bubble has burst in the main event and we are in the money. And we have a new lineup on the main stage featuring team pros Ben Sprague and Rafa Moraes. I met Sprague here in Monte Carlo. I'm exactly in his left. So, oh man, nice to meet you in person. It's, it's a nice moment. It's always nice to, to share that spotlight with people you're friendly with. It's always fun to play in TV land on the feature table. It's a really nice set as well. It's very bright, it's very bold. It really feels like you're in a, a very special occasion. And it is, you know, it's a very important event and the surroundings certainly reflect that. Well, the post-bubble bust-out bonanza is well underway. Leon Margetz, one of the first players to cash. 155th place finisher. That's worth 8,690 euros. So let's head over to our new feature table. In addition to Spraggy and Rafa, we've got PCA 2014 Super High Roller champ Fabian Quas. And the big stack at the table is Ferenc Diak. Blinds are 2,000-4,000 with a 4K big blind ante. Did you say Fabian Quas? Cross my heart and hope to die. Meanwhile, I've heard that a former EPT champion has hit the rail. Davidi Katai out in 153rd. That's a shame. Action has been folded around to qualifier Erkin Cernmetz. He's out. Andrew Hume passes. Ferenc Diax on the button with Queen Nine of Clubs. And that is a raise to 8,000. Spraggy has ace three offsuit in the big blind. Yeah, this is an automatic defend. And these two will go heads up to the flop, which is ace eight six with two clubs. Top pair for Spraggy, flush draw for Diak. If Spraggy's anything like me, he's going to hate the fact that he flopped top pair here. Plays in flow, checks to the razor, and Diak continues to 14K. Luckily, Spraggy's nothing like me, and he's actually good, and he'll be happy that he has top pair. He calls, and we go to the turn, which is the four of diamonds. So Spraggy is now better than a four to one favorite. Checks a second time. I think he might be in showdown mode already. Diak checks behind. And the board bricks out for Diak. And no, I was wrong. Spraggy, with the way this hand has gone, understandably thinks he can bet for value. Yeah. 13,000 into 50,000. Diak with just queen high. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Shoves on Spraggy. It's all into call. Spraggy was not expecting all of this, Diak. Huge bluff from the big stack at the table. And it works. Spraggy folds the best hand. Rance Diak now playing 542,000. What a giant beat that we cannot watch the Champions League game now. I'll get to watch it soon. 
<laughs> Second half. <laughs> Spraggy does love his soccer. Big Manchester City fan. Yeah, well, to go broke, he'll have to actually put his chips in. To the outer tables, where Eric Svez has called an all-in from short stack Jean-Philippe Peratou. It's actually Peratens. Which are no good against aces. Oh, well, if it makes you feel any better, uh, pair of twos wouldn't know one either. Yeah, that is an elimination, taking us down to 140 players. <laughs> so Jean-Philippe Peretou cashing for just over 9K. His chips go to Eric Spares. Here's a hashtag fun fact, Joe. Eric's son, Lucas, is also still in the tournament. You can tell he's got his father's Spares. One more eliminations at the outer tables. Another big name has just gone. Christoph Vogelsang knocked out in 138th place. I know why the caged Vogelsangs. Fly free, Christoph. He cashes for 9,320 euros. We've also lost French player Senor Ardic. He was eliminated by Malta 2015 champion Neil Farrell. Still riding high on that new dad run good. Well, we're going to stay out in the field. Julian Martini's involved in a big pot against Javier Zapatero. This is incredible. Do you know what Zapatero means? No, I don't. No, nope. uh, me neither. Sounds awesome, though. Well, we join the hand on the river. Action is on Zapatero. He's betting. 94,000. So just under one third pot on a flushy paired board. Martini calls, Zapatero tables ace-king, and it's good. Can't beat top two. Well, that pot will see Javier Zapatero take the chip lead in the Monte Carlo main event. He's got 892,000. From Zapatero to Zappa Hero. He is 160k clear of Didrik Mantor in second place. Neil Farrell, Eric Svez, and Ramon Kalias are all in the top 10, as is Ferenc Diak, who, of course, is table captain up on the main stage. I love seeing Diak on the main stage. Lines 2 4. Action on the table, chip leader. He's got ace nine of diamonds. These days, you can raise any suitor days from any position. Did you know that? Makes it 9,000. Folded to Rafa Moraes, who's on the button with ace, king of spades. Yeah, and of course, sometimes this happens. Rafa re-raises to 27K. Regarded as one of the best players in Brazil, 1.67 million in live earnings. Pretty impressive. For Diak, it's pretty tough to fold this when you can still make the nuts. Yep, he calls. We go to the flop. Jack 8-4 with two diamonds. Look at the equities. It's now almost a coin flip. And what do you want here with diamonds? Nut flush, straight flush, sky's the limit, kid. Check, check. King of Diamonds on the turn. That's top pair for Marais, but it's the nut flush for Diak. This is very, very sad for Ace King. Looks like we'll see a delayed continuation bet. 41K into 64K. Really no reason for Diak to go crazy. Yeah, just calls. And we get the inconsequential five of hearts on the river. Diak checks again. Perez will go for value. Doesn't have a pot size left bet behind. He does shove. Oh, no. And gets called. And that will see Rafa Moraes eliminated in 128th place. Game guys. Well, maybe somebody can send him an NFT of the trophy. Good luck, good luck. Thank you. Okay. you too. Rafa cashing out for 9,320 euros. The rich get richer.
<laughs> nice call. Nice, huh? That's nice. And Ferenc Diak now playing a stack of 710,000. So my name is Ferenc Diak. You guys probably gonna be like, this guy is Ferenc Diak. So yeah, my name doesn't sound as cool international. I've been playing for like 15 years now. I play tournaments for fun sometimes, but mainly on a daily basis I play PLO cash games. I actually came to Monte Carlo for the first time and I just hopped into the main event. I was pretty lucky with my seed rows. And then I got, you know, I got the seat in the feature table and uh, I'm not gonna be gun shy and I'm not gonna be faced by the money or the pressure or the cameras or, or my opponents. I am 100% sure that I can win this tournament. I'm just gonna play my A game and hopefully my little son is gonna watch this stream in a few years and uh, I just wanna make him proud. Very likable fella. Well, we're heading out into the field where Ramon Kalias has gone to the river in a hand against Nicola Grieco, who you may remember from the Monte Carlo final table in 2019. I do remember, and I remember he was a bit unpredictable. Action has been checked to Ramon. Who bets 40,000. Grico calls, Ramon tables nines. And nines are good? It would seem so. Unpredictable. And Ramon is now closing in on the half million mark as we return to the feature table. What do you think, he had eights? I'm baffled. Action is on, Ferenc Dieck, he faults. Fabian Quas has Kings. My favorite train station, Kings Quas. He raises to 10,000. Ace nine for Spraggy in the cutoff, he's relatively short. No, oh, no, not another Spraggy ace. I mean, raggy ace. I thought I'd drop some chips, maybe I have, I don't many here. He is all in for his last 53K. Ace Queen suited for our concern, Mets. I'm all in. And he reshoves. That's not good. Sevens for Andrew Hume. He folds. Fabian Quas calls. Three way all in with two players at risk. Wow, I'm doing really well. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't two nines get folded too? Just kidding. <laughs> For the avoidance of doubt, Spraggy is not doing really well. Just a 7% chance of survival. I can make the bottom end straight flush. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight of spades. I'm like home and dry. I feel like you're going to get some sort of sweat. I'd like a sweat. That would have to be some coordinated sweat. Here comes the flop. Oh, here we go. Well, it's a sweat for Cern Mets. He's got the flush draw. Sprague, he can make it back to our straight. I admire your optimism. He's down to 3% now. Okay. Oh, wow. Double gutter. Here goes your sweat. <laughs> now you're in. Yes, for it. I feel very good. <laughs> Pretty much the best you could hope for. Seven is always Amazing. coming. Sprague now has a straight draw. Cern Mets has straight and flush draws. Yes. And it's Sun Mets who gets there. Good game. Good game. Good, game. Good luck, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Have fun. Spraggy is eliminated. No, I don't think he meant it when he said have fun. A min plus cash, just over 9K. As Sun Mets gets a near triple up. Sorry for your kings, but. I've seen it before once or twice in my life. <laughs> Spicy. That's why we call him Tabasco Kvass. Should highlight that Spraggy cashed in his first ever EPT main event. He's one for one. Well done. Welcome back to the Poker Stars EPT presented by Monte Carlo Casino, where we've just lost team pro Ben Sprague from the main event. Good luck, everybody.
I think because it was my first CPT, I was happy to hit the min cash. That's always nice in any tournament you play, but particularly nice that it was my first main event and uh, I, I made it over the line. He earned just over 9,000 euros for his run and is pleased to once again be competing in the live arena. I really think that poker players are happier than I've ever seen them because of coming back here and being able to play again. And I'll definitely be looking to sort of double down and go again wherever the EPT takes us next. Barcelona, it's Barcelona next, it's well publicized. Action resuming with the blinds at 2K, 5K with a 5K big blind ante and three new players on the main stage, Joe. Amano Di Nicola, Nicola Grico, and Frankie Maglioco. Poker players or the cast of The Sopranos? Well, there is one of the new players, Amano Di Nicola opening with ace eight, makes it 12,000 to go. Seems a little optimistic from early position, but what do I know, I'm a nit. Fold into the button, qualifier Er concern Mets. He's out. Andrew Hume in the small blind. Not going to play. Ferenc Diak in the big blind. Has the sailboats. Pocket fours. Set mining's kind of out these days, but in the big blind, still totally cool. A defend from Diak. Heads up to the flop. There's a four. There's a full house for Diak. Call him James Cameron. He went mining for a set and found a boat. And De Nicola continues for 8K with just ace high. I think a raise is going to be tempting here, but your opponent really shouldn't have much of this. Yeah, check raises to 28,000. Oh. And De Nicola calls pretty quickly. Oh, I guess with the ace of clubs, you can justify a call. Case four on the turn. Diak improves to quads. And uh, Di Nicola improves to two pair. So having taken over the betting lead on the flop, Diak barrels the turn for 35,000. And in case it wasn't clear, I was joking. Two pair, no good here. I was thinking this would be the end of the hand, but uh, no. He calls. He must think Diak is a real live one to be firing this with two cards he can beat. He's only got 89K left. There's 157,000 in the pot. Six of hearts on the river. Doesn't change anything, obviously. This has been a really great run out for Di Nicola to run away. Well, that is enough to put Di Nicola all in. A call here would be heroic. But the Bruce Willis and Armageddon kind of heroic, where the hero dies and Ben Affleck goes on to make Pearl Harbor. A real tragedy. Is he seriously contemplating calling it off here with just ace high? He's beating all busted flush draws. He does call! And he is out. Ace high, yeah. Hashtag death by quad seems like overkill when a six would have been enough. And Mano Di Nicola cashing out for nearly 10 and a half thousand euros. As Ferenc Diak moves over the million mark, he's now playing more than 200 big blinds. He can't believe Di Nicola called either. Out in the field, Sophia Lovgren's in a hand against American player Jaime Cervantes. It is a flushy double paired board. Quads versus quads. Action is on Lovegren and she bets 30,000. Cervantes calls. He tables kings, but Sophia has a full house. Yeah, not a lot you can do there. Got to watch out for those big blinds. Sophia Lovegren now playing 189,000. Still a below average stack. Back to the feature table, where we have another new player. Oleg Basayev's taken the one seat. Action's folded to Frankie Maglioco, Jack-10 offsuit. He raises to 12K. And Frankie Maglioco as Polly Walnuts. Ferenc Diak is on the button. Just aces. 
I was about to say plus two is a little early to raise with Jack-10. You might run into a better hand, but aces is overkill. Table chip leader makes it 42,000. Fabian Quas has got nines in the small blind. And this is not a great spot at all. Fabian's got almost 40 bigs. Folding feels weak. Shoving seems a little much with that many big blinds. There's still action behind. I have no idea what to do here. I'm at a real cross roads. Come on, Lynn. He decides to go for it. With the big blind folding, it's back on Maglioko. He passes. Ferenc Diak calls. Mm. Merry Christmas, Ferenc Diak. Courtesy of St. Nikwas. Decent cards you have today, sir. Ah, uh, don't start it. <laughs> <laughs> that started. Incredible. Quads, straight, aces, I mean, two pair. Full poker. I still, still have to win this one. I mean, that's the number of hands I get in a year. The flop is king, six, four. Diak still way ahead. Quas drawing thin. And now drawing dead. Good game. Good game. Good luck. He's eliminated in 101st place, cashing for 10,410 euros. Time for Fabian to pack it in. You know what they say, a rolling stone gathers no quoss. Ferenc Dieck, now tournament chip leader with 1.25 million. Well, as the day draws to a close, there are two other players in the field with seven-figure stacks. Yeah, one, just under 1.2. 1.2? Just a little bit less. 1.18 million for Neil Farrell, and just over a million for Ola Shemian. Well, another one of the big stacks is Ramon Kalias, and he is facing an all-in from Toru Ida. He's got Toru well covered. Makes the call. On their backs, tens for Ida. Ace Jack for Kalias, classic race, and an ace on the flop. Another ace on the turn, Ida needs a 10, doesn't hit. And Toro Ida will depart in 96th place. That means Ramon now has close to 700K. And we're heading back to the main stage where, surprise, surprise, Ferenc Dieck has flopped to set. Not just flopped to set. Flopped to set against top pair and two good flush draws that are blocking each other. Dieck betting 12,000. Oh. Gets called by Greco. Nice. Gets raised by Maglioko. It's now 50K. Top pair in the second enough flush draw does make sense. Diak calls. Greco folds, so heads up to the turn. Diak's got to tread a little lightly just in case the flush is already out there. Nine of clubs, so Frankie now has a flush. Bet's 50,000. Consistent. Not a great turn for Diak, that is. Decides to call. Would like to see the board pair on the river. But no, it's another club. 50K? Yep. <laughs> now, when you run super hot, it can be tough to make a fold like this, but calling for a chop is not always advisable. It is tempting, though, when this bet is so small. I think Diak has come to the conclusion that his set is no good. And he falls. A flush. And <laughs> maybe. Maglioko playing 728k. Diak didn't lose too much in that hand. And it looks like play has concluded at most of the outer tables. Players are bagging and tagging. 
Among the players who've made day three are Ramon Kalilas. One more day to follow Ramon. Julian Martini, Gail Bauman, Javier Zapatero. I like this part. You have to take a test before you leave, but all you need to know is your name. And bagging plenty of chips is Ferenc Diak. He finished the day as one of the chip leaders, second overall, sandwiched between Ola Shemian and Neil Farrell, who currently leads the Monte Carlo main event with 85 players remaining. Also in the top 10, seventh overall, is PSPC winner Ramon Kilias. Next time, an EPT legend takes center stage. Everyone knows him, Ole Shemian. But stardom doesn't guarantee success. F this table, man. <laughs>Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe for more awesome poker content and check out this video. The YouTube algorithm seems confident you'll like it.